Welcome to a special episode of the Wingfall Experience podcast and today we have Julian and Frank who built an electric e-foil themselves. So it is actually kind of a DIY version of a lift or a flight e-foil if you might have heard of that brand they are super expensive. Uh, commercial e-foil is about 10 to 15k euros that's pff, unbelievably um, even for guys who are used to wing foil um, gear prices that's a ton of money and uh, Julian and Frank actually built one for 1600 euros themselves and the cool thing is they even didn't buy a board they actually put everything into a hard case that is waterproof and they attached a foil and a motor and a battery pack and stuff like that on it and it actually turned out to be better than a 10 to 15k e-foil from a commercial brand. That is unbelievable. I wanted to talk to that guys once I saw the YouTube video so I got in touch with them and here they are Julian Klatz and Frank Rutsche. <laughs> All right, welcome to another Wingfoil Experience podcast episode. And today we have Julian Klatz and Frank Rutschig. And uh, <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, what's hey up? how's it going? <laughs> um, so normally I ask, when have you been the last time on the water? And uh, usually I mean with a Wingfoil. But in this case, um, that's something we're going to talk about later. Um, you use different gear, but this question still is valid. So when have you been the last time on the water? Like 24 hours ago, like 20 hours ago, 20 hours ago, 20, 20 hours, ago. hours ago. Yeah. So yesterday <laughs> how was it? in the evening, yeah, it was great. There was a, a sundown and it was, we had uh, like four e-foils yeah. and the fifth, uh, 41. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but it was really great. Yeah. I think I saw it in your Instagram stories. Um, yeah, maybe. Pretty decent sundowner session. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And especially on on super flat water, as far as I could tell from the from the from the gram, so to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, yeah. So, and that's actually the thing that you became, yeah, let's say, famous for because you did a do it yourself, um, yeah, e foil, and that's how I came across you guys, and I was like searching for. Um, how can I actually build my own efoil? Because I checked out the prices and I was like, oh, fuck, this is just too expensive. And it would just be an additional thing that I can use on my lake or wherever. And I checked out some YouTube videos and most stuff that I found was pretty boring and also pretty complicated. And then I came across some crazy dudes from Leipzig who uh, uh, invented that cool board. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we dive into that, um, please introduce yourself briefly. So... Julian, what, what do you do? What's your background? Uh, I'm a sound engineer in the real life. Uh -huh. And um, Frank always uh, builds uh, crazy stuff. And then I, I like it so much that I build it uh, after his... I, I, I use his... So he's, he's always <laughs> copying my stuff. Yeah, you know? and, then, and then he, 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 he takes my build plans and then he adds something special, you know? So because mm -hmm. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Yeah, I'm quite, um, yeah, or I, I do the complicated work and then Julian puts some nice LED lights on afterwards or something and then, <laughs> ah! Yeah, yeah. I, profit, I profit from his uh, faults always. Yeah. And then I'm adding some, some LED lightning and it looks way more cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you do, basically, you're the artist. Uh, and I, yeah, I'm the... Um, he's, he's a good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's most of the time it's a uh, quick and dirty what i built and mm -hmm. but it works most of the time uh, but what do you what do you usually build can you give us some examples like um everything with batteries also i built uh -huh. the batteries and then i um mm -hmm. i had a few uh, electric skateboards longboards um mono wheel uh, mm -hmm. all stuff i copied from him <laughs> <laughs> okay nice and a few efforts yeah nice so is it still a hobby or is it something that you also do for for a side gig or something like that no it's uh, still a hobby mm -hmm. okay yes. yeah 
And Frank, what about you? What what do you do in real life? So in um, yeah, in, in real life, I'm actually a developing engineer. So mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's like a I'm working for a special company who's building like small particle accelerators. And so what we're doing basically is just moving small um, ions or or atoms and accelerate them and yeah, collide them with any surface to modify it so mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's why um yeah we have like a, a nice workshop at the company um which mm -hmm. i can use and or get get help and yeah so i have the background so i can do like cad drawings designing and stuff and i know heaps of um um how to build stuff um like an engineer Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it helped a lot actually to um, don't die on the water or mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or on the east gate on the street or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite helpful actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a pretty solid background in, let's say, engineering and yeah. actually also about building stuff because I'm an engineer and I have no background in building stuff. I'm just a background <laughs> in theoretically doing something. <laughs> yeah. So what nice. what kind of engineer are you? Uh, oh, what the the proper translation is uh, uh, economic engineering. Yeah. Ah. Okay. And, oh, yeah. yeah. No. So my yeah. Oh, okay. um, my specialty in the university was uh, product development. Yes. Um, and that was kind of pretty interesting to me. But what I found out is when I started to work in in big companies and in R and D. Uh, yeah. Uh, departments and what i found out is actually uh, you're not um inventing stuff you're actually doing a new version of something that has been already invented and then <laughs> so yeah. that was kind yeah. of uh, kind of let's say disappointing to me because i always thought like hey let's let's become an engineer you know and then <clears> i can <throat> invent stuff all day and then i found out no no the dudes who are actually inventing something they call themselves uh, uh, uh what is what is the english translation like um pre-development stages you know and pr rapid prototyping stuff and all that shit and there's a pretty small department in a big r d department and i was like okay basically it's pr it's sitting on your desk and uh filling out excel uh, <laughs> <sheets in>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay so i kind of envy you a little bit you know <laughs> mm, yeah yeah so um yeah but let's get let's get back to your story so how did you first come across the idea because what julian told me in advance to this interview is um you both have no background in water sports is that correct um well um so i yeah i think two times i went surfing um in, on, in australia and in, in france so but mm -hmm. just for for one or two days uh, so it was like really like 15 years ago or something Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was absolutely impossible to catch a wave for me or something. So because mm -hmm. it was of the lack of time, and then I did some kite surfing for two or three days in Egypt or something. But yeah, literally, I don't have any experience, or I had mm -hmm. any ex hadn't any experience in mm -hmm. in surfing and water sport. Yeah, yeah, I did uh, wakeboarding one time last year, mm -hmm. but it was after I built the, my first efoil. So. I think okay. it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So basically in the water sport world, yeah, you can kind of refer to people who are like really beginner stage uh, guys uh, as a kook. I don't know if you came across that term. No. No, what uh, is it? No. A kook. Yeah, it basically like, it's like a, a noob. It's a, yeah, basically it's a noob for, for <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you have to be aware of them and then stay away of them, okay. <laughs> usually. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, so how did you had the idea to build an e-foil? I mean, like, did it just, did you come across a video? Or what, what was the initial, the initial moment? <clears throat> well, um, so um, I started with an e-skate. Like uh -huh. a, um, a friend of mine, she told me that she met some guy in the in the in the club, and he had like an electric skateboard, and it was really like the beginning of those um, history of the electric skateboard. Like I don't know, like seven years ago or something, mm -hmm. and you all only could buy them on um, on in Australia, 
for lots of money, like 1,500 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. And um, and I also hadn't any experience in, 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 in skateboarding. Um, mm -hmm. And then I just, um, yeah, looked up on the internet if there's like guys who already try to DIY this kind of boards. And um, yeah, and there was like one um, manual or something um mm -hmm. like on in, in on, uh, instructables or something mm -hmm. and um yeah and then, then i had a look and went my own way and and bought a motor and um yeah made a board and and so on and yeah because i have this like I put everything on on cid and in, in, in 3d and laser cutted stuff and and I wanted to have like it was like October, and I wanted to have like a winter project, but I was done one month after I started. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because it was quite um, in the yeah intense. So it was really really uh, the first thing to stay on an electric vehicle for for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And then like three or four years after that, um, I. I saw one guy. Um, he's pretty known. And let me let me quickly interrupt you. And yes. and then Julian built the skateboard after you and put some LED lightning below it. Or what is what was the story? No, no. I yeah. I I <laughs> built another skateboard. But <laughs> it was uh, half the cost. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, there's there's no um, trucks in the back. There was just one big ah, wheel yeah. in the back. Uh -huh. It was a, a three wheeler, kind of a three wheeler. Uh -huh. uh, extremely hard to drive. Uh, it was like like snowboarding in in uh -huh. uh, fresh snow. Yeah. So, but it it worked. It was extremely loud. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. So interesting then, concept. Yeah, and when he told me that he he uh, saw a video of this uh, DIY electric hydrofoil, I told uh -huh. him no, that's he wouldn't do this. It's a it's a very big project. Uh -huh. I, I hadn't I didn't take it serious I didn't take it serious when you told me about exactly. it yeah. so that was like um, you know uh, running around this project okay I mean it's it's quite big because I'm or yeah it's it's a big project for me because I'm um, I okay. live on the rooftop and um, or like the rooftop flat you know Mm -hmm. And and also have having that you know have a child and um, a small one and um, also the, the the flat was quite small for for such a crazy project, and then um, I yeah saw saw this um, guy he's called uh, Pacific Meister and he's a he's a German guy who is now living in in California or so, and mm -hmm. he just um, released um really nice uh, DIY videos how to build an efoil mm -hmm. in 2017 I think so yeah, yeah. in 2017 and um and that was um yeah the first or the yeah the, the first reason why I started and the second reason was that I really needed to have um, so I designed my own motorpod so it's it wasn't mm -hmm. a copy of Pacific Meister but it's quite uh, quite the same from the components and mm -hmm. but what you and and or in the in the past um, you needed to you you to build your own propulsion unit so which mm -hmm. the, which um, the, the main component is of course the, the in runner motor but then you also need an, an a planetary gear drive and mm -hmm. this um, this is a quite expensive part so like the, the the motor is like 120 euros or something and the planetary gear drive is completely always sold out it was a german product and and if you can buy it you have to spend like 400 euros and just for the just for the gear drive and that was mm -hmm. that's why i never or the 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 there was no initial point you know to start because it was just mm -hmm. too much money um you know and you have uh, other components which are quite pricey you know but this was too 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 um too much money and then i went to um you know ebay kleinanzeigen Mm -hmm. And it was like one gear drive, a new one for 30 euros, um, a new mm -hmm. one. Some like some dudes just 
sold them uh, because his friend died and he found it, you know, in the basement or something and he hadn't any idea what it is and he just put it on eBay client like for 30 euros. It was a death board. And then, <laughs> because it was a death board. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I bought it and I bought, of course, a second unit. Um, yeah. And then I started to design the proportion unit and everything. And it was um, a big road of pain, actually, because um, there's so much stuff um, which can go wrong. Um, so, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, but I, I really, I, I was so keen to, 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 you know, to, um, just to be on the water and and and, and to figure out what what will happen mm -hmm. and um so i have like and it's really uh, it's it, it, so like i had like 10 breakdowns you know i tingled everything together then mm -hmm. i uh put everything in the car went to the lake then i tried it for one minute then there was a fire something Something mm -hmm. burned, you know. All right, then mm -hmm. everything back in the car. One week later, um, I fixed that, and then um, did it uh, or did the second try, and then something break down again. So and this happened mm -hmm. like ten times, and then after ten times, I was able to ride the board for about I don't know five minutes without any breakdown, um, mm -hmm. and then it was so. Um, um, it was such a crazy time because I was um, really nervous. I was really nervous. You, you know, you have like a high power or high electricity currents in the water. You have this propulsion unit, and, mm -hmm. and I had any I hadn't any idea from surfing and also not from mm -hmm. foiling. So I didn't know how 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 it should should be. You know, and yeah, but um, with a lot of try and error, I figured out how 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 it's working, and then yeah, there's also like a, a YouTube video I put online in 2018, the first mm -hmm. tries uh, with this working unit, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, re it's nice. really looking totally uh, stupid, but um, yeah, <laughs> it was a great time actually. Yeah. yeah, we can put it in the show notes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that video. Yeah, yeah, nice. I, can, I, I remember uh, going to the lake over and over again. With yes, him yes. And putting on in in winter the neoprene. Yeah. And start plucking everything together, and then he goes on the water, and it was like boom, shit, something's broken. Okay, everything mm -hmm. back. So it was Man, it was damn. kind of depressing. Yeah, I, I. But what what made you guys, you know, want it so much? I mean, like, if you have no idea of surfing, you have no idea of foiling. Like, w why did you get through it? Um, because I had a realistic chance that it will that it can happen that I can uh -huh. do a, have an electric skateboard actually, uh, yeah. electric surfboard. So, uh -huh. um. So I knew that that it's it's uh, it's quite complicated, but um, then I yeah had this well, I bought every every part and and then if you have it on the table, of course you need to have success, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so <laughs> the building process was was such a lot of fun, you know. I wasted a lot mm -hmm. of time. So my wife still hates me for for this period of <laughs> yeah, our I marriage. I remember. So that's an e or or so like a DIY e is a really a big lady killer. Yeah, a <laughs> lady killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was there was a no talk about e policy. When we are in, <laughs> in groups together, and when someone someone asks us something about the efoil, so some wife, not not yours, yeah. I think some other one, yeah. <laughs> just no no efoil talk, no efoil talk, right? Now. <laughs> Who started this? Uh, <laughs> cause this it was um, like omni omnipresent. Yeah. This, this yeah. whole complex. I I am um, in the very first episode of this podcast. I had Henning Nockel, German waterman, um, in the podcast. And he basically said, like, with wing falling, you get so much time on the water compared to windsurfing or kitesurfing because you can go in really low winds. And um, when the six meter wing came out, which is a big wing for, for really like low wind uh, days, 
he said like we call that one the relationship killer because when you get one <laughs> you will be on the water every day and your wife is gonna hate you <laughs> yeah, okay. so i think yeah. an e-foil is even worse because you can so, go every day yeah so yeah. true yeah so that's true. so true yeah <laughs> yeah nice okay and, and then yeah yeah so and, and, and um so and uh, Yeah, and there, w there wasn't any community actually in in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So, and I would say, and I'm quite proud of this, that that I'm, that I'm or was one of the first in in Germany. So mm -hmm. even before like a commercial brand started, mm -hmm. they're selling. Nice. Yeah, I can approve it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And uh, how did you manage then to get on the foil? I mean, if you have no water sports background, I mean, foiling is pretty hard to learn compared to, let's say, wakeboarding or uh, some similar water sports. So yeah, no, how it's, long it's, did it take? No, it's not. I, I think it's much easier. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, no, I would say the same. Uh, I think um, uh, to learn how to e-foil, it's, it's easier than the most um, wind-based water sports. Mm-hmm. So there are some some guys who get on the board with no water sport experience, and mm -hmm. he was a, a really good um, skateboarder, mm -hmm. and he managed like I think less than a minute he got out of the water. <laughs> less than a minute. Yeah, it was crazy. So uh, so most most I would say talented people need about ten to thirty minutes. Uh huh. To they to they make their first flying phases and, yeah um but i think it's easier than the most water sports so no it, no instructions no teacher just let, figure it out yourself and you no 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 we we um we give uh, uh tips. some some advices some advice of course mm -hmm. of course Before. but but you know the big the game changer for why is that um so easy or easier is that you mm -hmm. have a remote control so mm -hmm. like a um Yeah, a stepless remote control. You can, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like pew, a mm -hmm. lot of wind or something. You can just mm -hmm. go step by step. All right, okay, let's 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 train to be on your knees and then mm -hmm. do this for ten for two minutes, you know, and then um, increase the power and then see what happens. And because mm -hmm. you can do it step by step, you know, if you if you are calm on the board and do those this leveling. Then it's quite easy to to um, to get there where you want to be. So yeah, that's man, that's mm -hmm. a big. Many people start on their on their knees, yeah. and they mm -hmm. they don't want to stand up. They drive like 30 minutes on their knees, and they are foiling and flying, and it's great. And yeah, you, you want to stand up? No, no, it's okay. I like mm -hmm. this. <laughs> so you don't mm -hmm. have to to hold any any gear or anything. You can sit. You can stand. You can be on your knees, uh, uh, and, and you can also yeah. like uh, limit the power. So yeah. I've got an app on my phone, so I can just uh, uh, limit the power of the board so that mm -hmm. a young person, like a 10-year-old uh, son of, of my neighbor, uh, can drive without any danger, I would say. Mm -hmm. that, that you know, I, you, really, you really find me um, pretty surprised because just to give you a perspective, like wing falling is really a sport that is, easy to take on compared to let's say kite surfing or windsurfing okay mm. but the hard part is mm. to get on the foil yeah because okay. so you i can I, i teach a lot of guys already to how to wing foil and mm. just to go you know back and forth um is probably depending on your talent like even if you have no water sports background if mm. you have a water sports background it's even easier but if you have no water sports background let's say in our or two hours to learn to handle the wing and to go back to the left and the right without getting on the foil, just oh, yeah. planing around mm. slowly, you know? Okay. Mm. And people are already stoked about that. And then it takes really some time to, to manage to get on the foil because you need to pump the wing right, mm. you need to pump mm. the board, you need to read the wind, you need to read the surface, you know, and then... It, I, I really saw a lot of guys struggling. If you have a foiling background, on the other hand, like I had, I, I had a kite foiling background, mm. a pretty strong one. I was wing foiling in the first, I don't know, I have a video online where it's basically uncut. I think it's five or ten minutes, you know. <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but uh, this is because I had 
you know, the skills and I just had to figure out how to mix them in this new sport. And and so I think it's super impressive that you can actually learn to e-foil in, in such a short amount of time. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's, I think that that's why um, many people like hate the sport. So not many people, but there are some uh, like um, water sports guys who, uh, mm -hmm. who don't like e-foiling because it's like taking an e-scooter from the street on the water mm -hmm. so but i can yeah. underst i can understand this um i'm not sure if it's if it's if yeah. it's good that this is uh, the next yeah. trend i think i think the you know that the same is true for wing foiling like if you um if i go to my spot where there are 100 wind surfers mm -hmm they're gonna be haters yeah. <laughs> and uh the first i think half a year i had to take a lot of compliments from them <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah but that's you know that's uh, the way it goes so yeah i wouldn't worry too much about it and if it's sports it's easy to learn i think uh that shouldn't be an argument to to hate the sport i mean it's like why should i why should i do something that is super hard to do you know <laughs> on the other so yeah. Um so how do you teach someone how to get on the efoil? Like what's the what are the steps um when you give them advice? So first of all I show them the remote um how, how this is working and where where they have to stand uh, beside the board. So of course you shouldn't mm -hmm. um be behind the board because there's the the the, the propeller for example. Mm -hmm. And then um <clears throat> Yeah, so, and we have really small faults. So all commercial boards are quite, or a lot of them are quite um, big and have a high volume so that you can stand up and just move forward, um, like mm -hmm. on the SUP. But mm -hmm. um, like I have a board which is 120 centimeter. So it's one of the shortest board, I think, yeah. um, in the world. Or I don't know, but it's really, it's really short. And it's really... Um, really um yeah not easy to ride um because you have to have all your weights um um onto the nose of the board because you have mm -hmm. this you know you have this board and you have the mass and you have the propulsion unit and you have a mm -hmm. big leverage you know or mm -hmm. like this and you have a big leverage and you mm -hmm. really have to stand up in front and then you have you have to go back um slowly uh, um yeah You, know, you have to move your weight um mm -hmm. and that's that's the thing at, with my board that uh, it's yeah quite heavy to to have this force or pressing down the nose um but um yeah i mean the, the most things they figure out themselves so i think sometimes it's not that good to tell them that much but so like yeah. safety stuff of course that's important but um yeah i mean You know they are unindependent out of wind. You know it's not like mm -hmm. that they're in a the hurry, so they can do it in a. They can do their own way, and then after mm -hmm. half uh, half an hour, I can give them some advices or something, or you know, mm -hmm. and and there's still power. You know, yeah, so it's, it's mm -hmm. not like okay, maybe there's no wind anymore or something. So it's mm -hmm. like we're not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's always nice. better just to to give a few a few um, advices, a few tricks, and then. Just uh, let uh, him or her try it out, and mm -hmm. then after 10 minutes, you say like, uh, "Yeah, I saw that uh, you should put more weight on the front or something like that." And mm -hmm. then um, helping him or her. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what 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 also helps is um, because we our boards are hollow, so because the electronics are inside, we also mm -hmm. put our mobile inside. So and the mobile is connected to like a cheap bluetooth headphone you know for 30 euros which is ip rated and waterproof and so mm -hmm. we can just call them on the water yeah. you know ah, <laughs> yeah yeah nice. so we don't have to shout over the lake yeah so we just you know just call them and then uh, they can talk with us <laughs> so for like <laughs> That's 30 euros. super smart yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that is super smart yeah i never thought about that um Yeah, that's cool. So you can give them <laughs> advice while no, they're no. actually yeah, figuring yeah. it out. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, like, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. as most mobile phones are already like waterproof, you can actually just also with wing foiling, you could just give someone a, um, a headset. Yeah. And 
and let them go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Are you, living, also, are you living your police station? Uh, there's this uh, alarm. Ah, yeah, sorry. Did you hear that <laughs> on the recording? Yeah, no, I'm living um, right across the street of the hospital. And, ah. um, yeah, so I, I, I'm already used to that sound. Okay. <laughs> And uh, fun fact, I'm also living across the street of BioNTech. Oh. So, yeah, I was watching them, you know, like, guys, get back to work. <laughs> uh, no time for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So maybe let's let's head over to to e-foiling in general. Um, like you already said, like you had one of the first or probably the first e-foil in Germany. Like, did you? Well, what's your guys' um, experience with the sport? Like, um, how did it develop the last couple of years? Where where do you think this whole is going? The the DIY part is um, uh, pretty pretty easy to explain because. Mm -hmm. um, Today you don't have to to um, buy and um, connect like ten or twenty different parts together. You just buy mm -hmm. like three parts, and mm -hmm. this, it's all plug and play. So the, the the technical part is like plug and play right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's not uh, it's not expensive, or or not more expensive than before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's, so so. Yeah. It's, it's so, what are the three components cleaner. that you that you need to buy? The motor, mm -hmm. then the motor controller, mm -hmm. and the battery. So and the foil, and the remote. Yeah. So I, I just said the technical part. Ah, okay. So the technical mm -hmm. parts Got are it. like uh, the fourth one is the remote, and that's mm -hmm. all. You don't need more, and it's, mm -hmm. it's like plug and play. You just have to solder a few plugs. Um, the, I think uh, uh, most. Um, the most difficult part the is most to, to shape the board actually because yeah. there's nothing on the market for, for like DIY builders um, to, to, mm -hmm. to have a ready to go board a hollow board with a waterproof uh, electronic box or so so that's, mm -hmm. that's something you have to find for your own or do for your own or you take our shortcut <clears throat> with the rifle case <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and who came up with that idea <clears throat> with the rifle case um, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> like always. <laughs> Because that sounds a little bit like uh, it could have been Julian's idea, right? <laughs> Because, uh, he's the guy who has a crazy idea. So. <laughs> <laughs> What I heard in the beginning. And so, and you, you had the, and how did you come up with the idea? Like, because it was just too hard to, to build the boards or what was the initial reason? Yeah, exactly. Um, so we, we built, um, like five or six different boards already, or also a friend of us, um, um helped me or yeah, me mm -hmm. basically. And, and it's, the work is so nasty. It's, It, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it because you have to work with epoxy, you have to wear masks, and it's, it's yeah. And um, I was looking for, um, yeah, like a box which is waterproof and um, which is maybe looking just a bit like a surfboard, also from the value and uh, from the volume, so that a rider mm -hmm. can stand on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but I couldn't find anything actually. And then yeah, sometimes like night i went to bed you know and when your brain capacity is at five percent and you're like dumb as hell <laughs> then there was this idea actually and yeah mm -hmm. rifle cases you know you just need to find the the right uh, search google word and then you're gonna find something and yeah there were heaps of rifle cases on the internet like sniper rifle cases and You know, those Pelican cases for camera boxes. So they also exist mm -hmm. in, in a huge scale. And yeah, and there was like one for 120 euros, which is literally nothing for such a, you know, for such a board, which is completely ready, you know, it, and it, it has like transport wheels <laughs> 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 already installed. <clears throat> Do you have a background with weapons or how no. did you come up with a rifle case? No, no, no. Because no. I didn't, I mean, I, 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 I don't have a weapon. I never thought about getting a weapon or a rifle or something like that. And, and I mean, if you would have asked me, I would have probably thought that 
yeah, there must be something where you carry it in, but yeah. I never thought about it. And I yeah. explicitly wouldn't think about that it should be a waterproof case where you carry a weapon in. Yeah, so I was like a the um the uh, uh website. There was a there was a weapon in this case in the open case and uh, weapon uh -huh. not weapon not included. Was <laughs> <packed>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I saw it in the past or something, you know, and then there was this like this connection. Uh -huh. and then I, I, yeah, I got it. I think uh, <coughs> the word rifle case is is just a, a catchy word. It is a rifle case, but uh -huh. it's um, we don't use it. We we have no connection to rifles or something. Mm -hmm. Something we mm -hmm. just like this catchy, catchy keyword. Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> and that solved the problem of building a board. So. That and that was the interesting thing of what I found because that, that's what I found intriguing of your video because I thought like, hey, that is actually doable. I just need a yeah. waterproof case. Mm -hmm. um, I already have a couple of foils. Um, I and then I thought, okay, what do I need? I probably need a, a motor. I probably need a controller. That so I had to say the same thought. I didn't think about the remote, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of dawned on me that I also need a remote. Mm. And uh, and I thought, yeah, and, and, and I fucking need a battery pack. And, and then I have to get everything together and, and I probably can go e-foiling. Yeah. Um, on yeah the, the, the funny thing, uh, when you told me first, he, he sent me about three different um, rifle cases. Mm -hmm. um, and I told me his idea and I, I liked it, but I, I didn't tell him. So I... I just bought one, <laughs> and the, this one, um, mm -hmm. and a few days later he came back and just, yeah, let's talk serious. I like to build this. I like this this project. And I told him, yeah, mm -hmm. it's already at my home. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm building this. Um, yeah, that was the uh, beginning. Because uh, uh, nice. at this time I I uh, was building a new electric hydrofoil, but uh, so I had all the electric parts, but. The board itself was uh, in production, mm -hmm. so I had the, all the parts lying around, and I thought I can can use it here and yeah. reuse it if it doesn't work for my for my uh, original build. Yeah, cool. So and and let, when we dive into your rifle case build, um, which is yeah pretty catchy actually. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I I I was wondering, like, I mean, because if someone is a wing foiler, he probably has a foil. Yeah. So what do I have to destroy to build an e-foil? Um, so if I you mean on your I, on your foil, yeah. you mean on your existing foil? Yeah. Um, you just need to drill uh, three small holes into the mast um, mm -hmm. to get the cable through. So you need to have a hollow mast. Uh, where mm -hmm. you can get cable through, and then um, yeah, basically that's it. So it's not not re or it's not uh, weakening or weakening the the strength of the mass because you have like three holes, like eight millimeters or ten millimeters in diameter. Yeah, and basically that's it. And um, or or yeah, and you have to drill three holes into the mass plate, you know, to, to get the cables mm -hmm. out of the mast. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that's it. So it's not um, yeah, a big risk to to destroy anything actually. Mm -hmm. So if I if I drill three holes in the in the um, top of the mast, yeah, I can, and it's a hollow mast. I can yeah. um, put the cables through, and then where do they go out? Um, close to the fuselage. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is where you attach the motor and the motor, the motor pod. Yeah, the motor pod. So you need like a clamp system. Mm -hmm. um, which can be uh, 3D printed mm -hmm. and which holds the motor. And there's also inside this clamp system, there's a lot of space for routing the cables um, mm -hmm. to the motor. And when you when you buy the motor, for example, the cables are already um, soldered on, you know, so you, you, have a, you have a completely waterproof motor and then the Three mm -hmm. cables are going out, so you don't have any connection inside the water or something. So the connection oh, nice. is is in the rifle case, you know. Mm -hmm. So th this is why everything is waterproof, um, and you just need to route the cable through the mast into uh, uh, through the mast plate into the rifle case, mm -hmm. and then connect it with your controller. So to everybody who's listening and has a gong foil, 
<laughs> as the gong masks are super cheap uh, basically you have zero risk because you can buy another one for 60 euros yeah true um if you have like me like a fanatic foil and an rd foil and stuff like that it's a little bit more expensive if you destroy the mask but it's still it's kind of feasible i mean a new mask is about i don't know depending the brand let's say 200 euros or something like that if it's not a full carbon <clears> thing <throat> yeah um so that's pretty solid so and And I see on the in the background that you have um, um, uh, aluminium looking mast or something like that. Yeah, it's aluminium. Is it? It's from. Is that a uh, special special mast or is no, it? No, it's uh, an uh, RL RL foil. Uh -huh. um, I think that's a that's a kind of yeah that's a brand that has basically a that I think that's an open mold in China where the RL uh, foils are coming from, right? No, no, it's coming from the Czech Republic, um, uh -huh. most, most of them. And, um, and they are like, um, for, for the e-foil application, they have the best wings, actually, because they have yeah. like high aspect wings um, for quite a small money, full carbon. And mm -hmm. um, so we tried a lot of different uh, front wings and back wings and also gong and stuff. And um, mm -hmm. so personally for us, that's the, the best wing actually. Yeah. And also like the mast, I mean, all or the most um, foil masts are out of extruded aluminium mm -hmm. you see here in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's just mm -hmm. like black aluxed. Um, And of course, a lot of are also carbon, but like this one is 20 euros. 20 mm -hmm. euros, um, like the fuselage is, I think, 80 euros. Um, not this front wing, but the other one, he, yeah. Julian has a special kind of. <laughs> it's like 300 euros, and the back wing is 100 or something. So it's pretty 70. cheap, in, in, or 70. Yeah. In total, it's like 450 euros for the whole, for the whole foil, also with mass plate. And the quality mm -hmm. is absolutely perfect. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. of course, it's really dependent that you have an efficient setup. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a, like a huge, huge uh, SUP wing, um, of mm -hmm. course, you can um, get on the plane at like 12 k an hour. But um, with faster speeds, it will eat a lot of amps. So you have a lot, a big consumption. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. like... Um, save 30% of power, you have like 30% more writing time. Ah, that's the reason why all the efoils have a uh, pretty small yes. foil, so to uh, say, compared yes. to wing falling. Yes, so this is the, <clears throat> the, the main difference, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you, you need to watch your energy, yeah, yeah, and your consumption, yeah, because. yeah, because for winging, actually, you tend to have bigger wings because you want to go in low winds, um, you yeah. want just to get up on the foil yeah um and then energy is not a problem once you're up on the wing um yeah. the wind is free and then you don't have to store it you don't have yeah, to yeah. yeah yeah so there's no weight uh, involved or something like that yeah um uh, that's interesting and and may, what, what's the size of the front wing just to give people some One, some uh thing to, to compare it to uh, 1100 uh, cubic centimeters yeah yeah Yeah. Square centimeters, probably. Yeah. Uh, square, square, sorry, square, square <laughs> yeah. centimeters. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, especially yeah, okay. made for uh, e-foiling front wing. Mm -hmm. mm. So I would guess, like, if someone has a really small front wing for wing foiling for like 30 knots, 25 knots plus, it would probably be around that size, mm -hmm. like 1200 or mm. 1100 something. Yeah. Um, uh, if so yeah but normally um you have for wing falling like 1500 to 2500 square centimeters yeah, right that's, uh, okay. that's huge. Yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i mean the i'm not sure um what is uh what what are the, the the speeds on wing falling but like this one goes up to 46 kilometers an hour so mm -hmm. and um so and with yeah with a bigger profile profile wing um you only can go like 35 like 10 case yeah. less you know yeah. so and everything is optimized um on this one for for e-foiling so that you have a, yeah. a high end speed or high velocity and uh yeah and this and small power consumption yeah i think the I, i'm not sure if there's an official world record for wing foiling um 
but I saw some crazy guys who went uh, 60 kilometers per hour. Oh shit! Okay, okay. Um, yeah. which is pretty pretty scary to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, the, that's super crazy. The record in e fighting is uh, 56 or something like. That. Oh really? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. That is a record that should be easy to break if you have a strong falling background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. The problem is the, um, the 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 consumption goes like exponential with a higher speed. Ah, okay. So it's a technical problem right now. It's not a not a skill problem. No, it's right. not a skill no, no, problem. It's, it's, no. it's, it's, ah, maybe, okay. maybe, maybe, but um, yeah, it's a technical problem actually. Excellent. Yeah. So ah, when you okay, when you it. are like uh, thirty five, I think uh -huh. many efforts go to 35, 40 uh, uh -huh. kilometers per hour. So uh -huh. the step from from thirty five to forty is like with uh, you you nah, not, you don't double the power, but it's it's much. It's pretty much power. You need mm -hmm. for just a few mm -hmm. case more an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, but that would also mean probably that uh, a more efficient foil will give you uh, would would really benefit you more than a, than a wing folder, for instance, because I found out lately that there's this thing called shark skin. Do mm -hmm. you know shark mm -hmm. skin? Uh, not really. Um, no. Which. I, I, I just heard about it. So this is like really like a, a, a new learned knowledge. So I'm, I didn't research it. So that's a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as I heard, it's something that they use for professional um, sailing foils. And the shark skin basically has some ripples on it that makes the water... Um, the, wa the how, how is it called? The, the friction in the water... I think it's about 30% less or something mm, like that. Mm. Um, so it's crazy because, uh, I mean, like, I, I don't know if it's 30 or, or some, some other figure. I'm not sure about that anymore. Um, there are uh, sw uh, swimsuits. Yeah. There are yeah. swimsuits with the same technology as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that would probably uh, give you a way better battery life if you put it on the front wing yeah, and the rear wing. And stuff. Yeah, you can. You can just uh, to get higher speed. You can just uh, decrease the the um, the e foil. Uh, so the the wing, but mm -hmm. then you won't get out of the water. You need to leave mm -hmm. this um, first phase where the board is in the water, and that mm -hmm. needs like three three times of the energy you need uh, mm -hmm. to foil. Uh, okay. So, if so you... we need kind of a kind of an electric wing that folds itself down, uh, maybe something like that. <laughs> yeah, or it, it shrinks. Yeah, something like that. A transformer yeah. wing, or yeah. you just have enough power for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the American way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, speaking of Americans, what do you guys? I mean, you are clearly the DIY guys, but what do you think about commercial brands like Lyft and and uh, what the other one? Um, there are two big ones, right? Flight, flights, and flights from Australia. Flight, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> um, we tried a lot of different e-foils, um, also commercial one, also the the, the flight board, and um, and. Ours, I mean, the the um, the development is pretty old on, for example, on the flight board, also on the lift board. So they're like three years behind um, because mm -hmm. it's a commercial one and they are producing heaps of, you know, it's like a car. If you buy a car now, they always had a shitty software because it's six years, they developed it six years ago. And, um, and those commercial boards have the same problem. I mean, they're like uh, material-wise, they are like a mercedes like mm -hmm. the flight board and the, the lift board, the, the build quality is so nice, actually. But, of course, you pay for that price, right? Uh, or you pay mm -hmm. the price for that. So, mm -hmm. and um, so, for example, if you, if you directly compare um, the best commercial board with this rifle case board, um, mm -hmm. we have a silent motor, so you can't hear it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have... Mm -hmm. um it's like it's like com completely silent it's completely silent so, so when you are on the water you you don't hear anything you hear this um when the water drops when they're mm -hmm. dropping from the board in the water that's louder than the motor itself <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy yeah 
And so yeah. we also don't have a water cooling. So they have like a water pump inside the board, which is pumping water from from the mast, uh, from the from the button of the mast um, inside uh -huh. the foil and to cool down the electronics. So we don't have this. We have like a passive cooling system without mm -hmm. any pumps or water. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's smaller and so on. And I mean, it's it's. Of course, it's completely different if you buy a, or if you build a, or if you are developing a commercial board. It needs to be safe, and that's that's a DIY build. So, no, but um, because I like three years behind, um, this one is maybe better than than a commercial board. Definitely, yeah. really, yeah. just just yeah, just uh, just the te the technical parts. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, and, and, we have and, the and, uh, the, the yeah. West motor controller, which is pretty uh, smart. And uh -huh. intelligent there are um so on on brushless motors you always need a, a, con a controller and yeah. there's like a new one which is open source it's called a vesk motor controller mm -hmm. and because it's open source there you, you can buy um copies from from different uh, manufacturers and it's um it's completely silent they use uh, mm -hmm. technology to so that the motor is completely silent Uh -huh. Um I think how do you how do you define yeah yeah sorry uh, how do you define better by the way like um is it measured in I mean of course you just described you know that that it's more silent and stuff but is it also like faster or more durable or Well, what what does better mean? Um, I think it's not more durable. I think, no. um, but it's faster. So forty six. I'm not sure what the what the speed record of those commercial boards is. I think is. it's in the same range. Yeah, it's range. in the same range, but um, yeah, and it's um, because it's that small. Also, um, it's really nice to um, to make curves with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so it mm -hmm. feels you have a really direct uh, direct steering, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so. I don't say that it's that we that we want to compete or something with any commercial mm -hmm. stuff, but um, but this one is pretty pretty nice. It's yeah, mm -hmm. and, and for the money, I mean, it's like one thousand eight hundred euros compared to fifteen thousand euros or like thirteen yes. thousand well, euros or something. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I mean, like the usual uh, commercial brand. If you, I, I checked some prices, and it's like. 10k plus yes yeah, yeah. yes yes and and you already dropped your price and and you paid 1800 euros for the whole thing including the foil including the motor including, including the batteries yeah everything so uh i have to excluding mention excluding the bluetooth headset and the mobile phone Ex excluding, excluding, yeah. yes <laughs> but uh you have to mention that the the board itself it's a uh, it's a nightmare which we have here so yeah it's uh, like the worst kind of board for for beginners how mm -hmm. do you call them gooks 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 k o o k okay Kook. so this is the worst yeah. the worst uh, board so because um you don't have this normally you have you have uh, three phases when you're foiling First, when the board is in the water, mm -hmm. um, and then you get uh, like 50, 15 kilometer per hour when the board starts gliding on the water, mm -hmm. and then the the last phase is when it it flies above the mm -hmm. water. And with this mm -hmm. board, there's no no second phase, so there mm -hmm. there is no gliding. You have how it's how's the first phase called when it's in the water? Uh, how's it called? Verdrängerfahrt. Verdrängerfahrt. Yeah, yeah I'm you... also missing the word right now. It's called a. <laughs> it's like oh, a, shit. A, ta a tanker. I come up with it. Like yeah, a tanker, yeah, yeah. like a tanker in the water, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then it goes directly into the flying phase. Yeah. So you have no time to adjust your feet, uh, or or like um, learn how to to throttle the motor, because yeah. you, you go straight into the flying, and it's mm -hmm. pretty hard. Also, so I would say it's if you have no no um, experience with efoils, it's, it's mm -hmm. nearly it's, impossible to to learn this in one day. Can I can I just throw uh, an idea in? Like if I would build a rifle case efoil and I would would like to make it 
a better planning board, mm, planning, yeah. I would probably just glue some <laughs> kind of surfboard thing mm. uh, plate or something like that, you know, below it. Wouldn't that help? Like to give it more glide? Yeah, but it would uh, uh, decrease the, um, the the look of the board. Yeah, yeah, but you could, you know, like um, could be something that you just put on <laughs> if you want to teach somebody, you know, like, uh, and you can maybe maybe also like take it off. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, the, so the idea is is good, but uh, yeah. then you have again, um, you need to drill holes, which yeah. uh, which are capable of uh, getting uh, water inside. Yeah. Um, True. Yeah, but the idea is, isn't that bad for like uh, screwing on uh, pretty fast, like a triangle at the front, so that they have a better mm. planning, um, and then take it off easily. So, but mm. you know, and that's I mean that's doable, definitely. That's definitely doable. Um, but um, so for us, it, it wasn't necessary, and we just mm. like the look of this rectangular yeah. hydrodynamic yeah. nightmare. Mm. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's like a helicopter you know with just pure power we move it in the air so like a helicopter mm -hmm. it's just like a helicopter mm -hmm. is just um, yeah like a humble you know mm -hmm. um, and with a lot of power it magically flies and it's the same with mm -hmm. this one so like we take like 7000 watts or we need mm -hmm. 7000 or 60 to 7000 watts um, to um, get it in the air and that's lot that's so huge, it's like yeah. it's like 180 ampere amperes that's uh, mm -hmm. amperes, that's crazy so it's like an electric car actually so i i designed a <laughs> um, a little thing to reduce the uh, withstand of the water mm -hmm. but i just printed one out and then i was too lazy to <laughs> to do more <laughs> So you're always going in a turn? When you, when you, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. I call it... Uh, <laughs> when you throttle uh, up. It's called Hydro Booster. <laughs> I think it's the only reason why the boat uh, flies. Nice. Yeah, I think so too. I, yeah. I, I, was, I was actually <laughs> thinking when I, when I thought about a DIY board, I was thinking it would be super cool to have... Uh, to have actually... Um, the all the components attachable to an already existing board you know but i i didn't I, we were we were brainstorming a couple of ideas how to do that um we ended up uh, that we thought okay let's build a rifle case board first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> figure out you know how the whole technology part works because we have no clue about that we never did it and then maybe figure out where to put the weight on the board, you know, because I think that's also critical, probably. Like, where do you actually have the battery pack and the and the components that bring the weight? Um, and then we can think further. So the 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 <laughs> right. um, there's already a brand uh, in a company in Australia uh, mm -hmm. who, which is doing this. So um, they gonna or they are selling. Um, like a strap on um, system with a battery which you can put on top of your normal surf foil or on mm -hmm. your on your on your wing foil um, mm -hmm. and attach a motor and um, and it's a not really powerful one because um, they're gonna use it to to catch waves you know to um, mm -hmm. get some more power to catch bigger waves um, because they have waves in Australia, I've heard. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and that's a and they they and they have a really um, um, good idea because they also have like a folding propeller um, mm -hmm. instead of a fixed propeller, and so the the plates are um, automatically swapping. And uh, then you have um, a quite low uh, water resistance um, mm -hmm. when you're surfing the wave. Without energy. Mm -hmm. Without energy. So you can turn it off and just surf uh, this wave. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. That's something I really, really would like um, to do sometimes. Do you, do, you, um, do you know how the brand is called? Yeah, it's uh, it's called from um, uh, foildrive.com. Foil drive, uh, that's super cool. Yeah, that's probably interesting for people who have already a wing foil and maybe want to attach yeah um something on it. 
But and did you guys ever go in some waves with your foils? Uh, like a tanker wave or something like that? Or? Um, <laughs> yes, so um, yeah, this year I went to Sardinia, uh, mm -hmm. Italy, and last year as well. And yeah, and there was like an, um, like waves of like, I don't know, one, one and a half meter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. So it's, it's um, you can imagine it's really like a plane. So if you really have a, a wave which is higher than the mast, and you want to uh, go through the wave, then you really need to have, like, if this is the wave, or like, is mm -hmm. this is the wave, and you're, the, <laughs> you're, you know, you have to get, you have to have, to, or you, you have to throttle up just to get over the wave. Mm -hmm. It's like with the plane, which is um, facing to a mountain, and then the last second, you know, it's going <laughs> over. So it's the same, actually, on the water. So that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, it's and it's absolutely doable and it's so fun because everything yeah it, yeah it's just like moving everything you know and um, but it's 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 doable so I thought it's it's mm -hmm. more difficult but um, yeah and it's crazy so um, also the if you feel the power of the wave and then the the fall is getting up um, because you are in the wave mm -hmm. right now um, yeah and then my broke like like my my fuselage broke into the in the sea i don't know why um because I, I, i'm not sure why um but so like i had like yeah 20 minutes or so in the sea and it was fantastic mm -hmm. yeah it's damn, a nice shark. Shark. damn sharks yeah like i hit the pinguin or something i don't pinguin. know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they have that many penguins in Sardinia, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but uh, but actually that's something that happens in foiling um, not very often, but it can happen that you hit a fish. Yeah. Um, and we had an event last year at the Altmühlsee, which is in the south of Germany, mm -hmm. and um, there, it was called King of the Wing. It was the first wing foil event ever in Germany. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, because wing falling is so new, uh, mm. there were no events before that. Mm. And then um, we had a couple of crashes during the competition, and it was because someone hit a fish because they had <laughs> that many fishes in the sea uh, that fall. I, I don't know what, what's the stories behind that, but it was really like crowded. And um, yeah, there was a race that someone lost because in the middle of the race he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ketter pulled it to the front <laughs> 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 off the floor and like, what the fuck? And then you, then you just see a fish coming up, you know, like bottom up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, my dinner. So maybe, mm. maybe you hit something. Yeah. yeah, it could be. I don't know. Could be. Yeah, I also hit the duck already. Um, oh, yeah, and then you know there were like four ducks in front of me, like four, four, yeah, like four meters in front of me, and they're like. Three of those four ducks, they were quite clever, just fly, flow away. And then the fourth duck, uh, duck, uh, <laughs> duck, <laughs> duck just, um, um, just went beneath the waterline. And then I hit it with the foil, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a. Uh, but the I, duck, I, I, did, I did the duck survive? Or? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> That means no to everybody who's listening. <laughs> yes, it was the darkest, the darkest moment. Of yeah, the darkest <laughs> moment. Yeah, the, okay. the dark, darkest moment. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Sorry, sorry that, for uh, that, Dougie. Sorry. No yeah. I, I can't tell. Um, I, I, I should not tell my girlfriend about that because she will probably uh, not allow me to build the e-foil if I kill ducks. I <laughs> <laughs> 3,000. But maybe it was a suicide <laughs> duck. I mean, maybe, you know, because the other ducks, they, they just mm. fly away. And this there one... are no trains in the, in the sea, in yeah. the water. Yeah. You need to wait for an yeah. e-foil. Maybe it was yeah. a maybe, maybe it was a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So maybe let's get, let's get back to your rifle case e foil um, because if you basically also what you did is you had this cool video about your rifle case build, um, which I came across and that we also going to put in the show notes, and then you had um, a link below the youtube video to your uh, efoil builder site where basically it's a forum 
I was not aware that there are still forums in this world. I <laughs> thought forums died uh, beginning of 2000, something <laughs> like that. There's so many forums <laughs> for everything. <laughs> so I, I thought every everything is today now in Facebook groups and, and I don't know, Telegram groups and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so that's a pretty cool forum about for eFoil builders. Yeah. And you um, published, published your whole um, bill of materials there. Yeah. So, That's super cool. If someone wants to build one, he can just check it out. But disclaimer, I checked it out. I researched um, all the parts um, in detail. And I couldn't match your prices, guys. Uh, it was okay. super hard. So the, the battery so. cells are pretty high. So mm, they are, yeah. yeah, I think, two and a half of the price yes. of uh, half a year ago. Yeah. So, the, so the battery is, is normally it's the one of the most expensive parts yeah. of the efoil, yeah. and right now it's yeah. it's nearly three times uh, expensive, more expensive. Yeah. So maybe if we if we dive right into it, like, so you need a you need a rifle case if you don't want to kill your surfboard or have an old surfboard that you want to rebuild. Yeah. And that's about 120 euros. You need a foil. If you have a foil, you can just Destroy, uh, drill three holes in your mast and get a second mast or something like that. If you don't have a foil, you buy a foil for 400 to 500 euros from yeah. RL or from Gong or something like that. Yeah. Um, then you need a motor. The motor How is, much is uh, 300. 300? Yeah. So that's about, what did we have? 300, 800, let's say 900 something. Yeah. Then you need a controller, motor controller. How much is that? The motor controller was like 160 euros or 180 euros. But right now it's it's a, a little over 200, 220. Yeah. Okay. So let's say 1100 something. Yeah. Uh, you need a remote. Remote is 100. 100. Uh, 1200 something. And then you need a battery. Probably, uh, yeah, a battery. And that is, that was, how much, how much did you pay for the battery? Uh, like four. So I built the battery by myself. I just had mm -hmm. to buy the cells, um, mm -hmm. and I think the cells were four hundred and a bit. Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. with the extra material, I think I came about four hundred sixty or something for the yeah. battery. Yeah. And now I checked the price. Uh, I think four weeks ago, it's about eleven hundred, twelve hundred for the battery. Yeah, it could be. Could yeah, be. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah yeah. That, that, yeah. 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 So what what can what could I if I want to buy a battery and I want to build the efoil, what could I do about the the cell prices? Is there a workaround? Mm, yeah, there are some some other cells which are quite okay to use. Mm -hmm. Um it's it it is definitely a bit uh, uh, more expensive. Then half a year ago, but you can you can just use some other cells. Mm -hmm. uh, And how much money would I have to spend for some other cells? That... I think minimum six hundred. Six hundred, seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. But that would still make a pretty solid efoil that is comparable to a lift or a flight for two thousand euros. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, nice. I would say so. And What's the downside of the cheaper battery cells? Um, yeah, there are so many um, Eigenschaften. Yeah, the, 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 the power density is not that high than like um, the cells we, we were using, right? Yeah. So like you have a bit less capacity, but you have mm -hmm. small size, but less capacity. And also the uh, um, current you get out of those batteries is a bit smaller. It's like 15 amps instead of, I know, 10 amps yeah. instead of 15 amps or something. Yeah. So amps. most most of the time you have like two parts. It's the um, the capacity and the output current. So mm -hmm. the output current defines how much power you can drain of the batteries mm -hmm. and the capacity, how long you can do this. Mm -hmm. And you have always to choose to use a, a battery with a high output current or a high um, capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want both as a, a battery with a high current and high capacity, it's um, pretty expensive most of the time. And the mm -hmm. cell we used was 
actually cheap and had this high um, capacity and this high current. So mm -hmm. right now you can use another cell which has the same current and the same price, but it hasn't that big capacity. So you need to buy more of them or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. so question from a guy who has no experience in building his own battery pack. Uh, does the capacity um, some all oh, now let let's say does uh, the energy density in a battery cell somehow correlate to the likelihood of getting my battery burned up mm, no i won't think so so if you drain too much mm. energy from the battery yeah. it would get uh, hot and then uh -huh. it would get uh, burned mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that that what happen that's what happens if, like, I I don't know. I mean, in the car industry and in the the power tool industry, the batteries have to um, have to go through some really serious testing, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember that. I don't know if it's still um, a, a official test, but uh, they were shooting nails in the battery packs, yeah. and they were not allowed to explode or something like that, and. Yeah. Uh, or even get hot, I think. They were not allowed to get hot. And uh, But for the RC world, so mm. every, like all the toys and stuff, like I, I, as an outsider, I always thought like it's a little bit different, all right? So they, they are um, using batteries that are more likely to burn and to explode and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, so how uh, is it with, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you mix, you mix, you mix up, um, two different kind of, uh, lithium ion technologies. So you got lithium uh -huh. ion, which are like the shotgun cells, you know, like the, mm -hmm. uh, cyclider shells. And then you have mm -hmm. the lipo lithium polymer, mm -hmm. which is in mobiles or, or in, 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 in cheap hobby or RC stuff. And, um, mm -hmm. for example, for the, For the rifle case, we're using um, Samsung cells, which are quality-wise the best cells you can have on the market. Actually, I would say and one, of the, best, one, one, of, one the of the best, best. one of the best yeah. cells quality-wise. Um, so, and of course, you have a data sheet, and they did all those um, 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 safety stuff. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so that they're not getting a thermal a thermal runaway. Um, this mm -hmm. is the the the, the therm. Um, and yeah, they are, um, of course, lithium ion batteries are lithium ion batteries. I mean, they're dangerous, like, but they are mm -hmm. not that dangerous, like a lithium polymer battery, which is in your mobile or something. So, Got it. yeah. Um, yeah. And that's also the thing. If you like, if you charge the batteries, um, you don't, or, or you shouldn't charge it in your flat or in your home. So it should be outside, you know, where it can Should it <laughs> explode and nothing will happen if it happened, mm. you know? But yeah. um, so you and he's really the uh, um, battery spot welding god um, for the German DIY scene. So, and he is, um, or most most of the batteries of the German e -falls, um are from Julian. Nah, mm -hmm. no, not most of them. No, not most, but maybe, maybe half of them. Or maybe half of them, <clears throat> which is already pretty, uh, um, yeah, pretty much, pretty, um, much. pretty solid, yeah, pretty, pretty solid, solid, and um, yeah. yeah, and they're also rock solid. So mm -hmm. um, there wasn't any case where anything uh, went wrong or just mm -hmm. one thing, but it was like your, or it was like a stupid, stupid thing. But it wasn't uh, ah, uh, the adapter. Yeah, the adapter. power adapter, which it wasn't. Um... Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. so the uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I yeah, I'm always concerned um, about this, but uh, but because when something happen, um, mm -hmm. and it's and it's in your flat and it's your home, it will get really really bad because you can't. Um, you can't get the heat away from them. So even they are, those shitty bastards are also like firing up also underwater because they are producing their own ex uh, oxygen. So you, mm -hmm. you, there's not really a method um, to, to, um, 
Yeah, there is there is no method. There's it's, no it's, method it's actually. It's clearly impossible to put um, a, a burning lithium ion battery uh, out. Mm -hmm. Not even with sand or something like that, because they have their own oxygen, yeah. so you can. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you have like a ton of sand, to yeah, then there is an option, or there's also like glass pearls or something. But uh, yeah, you need to have this, you know. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so the like dumbest a... the dumbest thing is to put it in a in a um, in a closed box, in a, mm -hmm. a closed box because it will explode sometime. Mm -hmm. You always have to put it in a box where the um, the pressure, the gas, and the smoke can deflate, can, yeah. can go out. So if you yeah. if you uh, yeah. close everything, it would uh, explode. And that is true, or these safety precautions are true for for DIY batteries, obviously, but also for, do you also uh, take precautions for commercial built um, big uh, battery packs? I mean, they almost, I, I think they, they got, they have the same cells. Yeah. So I think like Glyft is also using um, um, Samsung or VTC6 or something. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty the same, but what they have, they have like a battery management system. So it's like a PCB, which is connected mm -hmm. to the cells to monitor the temperatures, to monitor over voltage, under voltage and so on. So mm -hmm. that's something we, we don't, or we, we don't have um, because mm -hmm. we are aware of the consequences or, or we are aware uh, not to, um, to, how to, how to handle how the to, whole how, process, how, how to handle it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but it also can happen with a commercial battery um, mm -hmm. that there will that it can yeah yeah it just happened a few times have you yeah. have you thought about building a DIY efoil with commercial battery packs let's say from a driller or a, a battery power chainsaw or something like that would that be possible no, nah, not not. Uh, there are mm. um, commercial battery packs, um, but they have to to get this this much power output, yeah. and uh, most of them um, could do couldn't do this. So the only way is but, to to um, use more or bigger batteries to have this output. But then um, it's like extreme heavy. Mm -hmm. Maybe because so if you let's say you have a um i i used to work for the company steel in in, yeah. in germany south of germany and they had a battery pack that was able to run a chainsaw mm. which I, i'm not sure about the technical specifications of the battery packs but like if you would have like three or four of these batteries um you would still not have enough energy to to get a e running yeah definitely or maybe you could run it for about five minutes so uh -huh. um, running a chainsaw, yeah, there's, today there are products from Lidl or something, <laughs> battery-powered chainsaws. Um, yeah, they, they, I'm pretty sure you, you couldn't do something like this. Mm -hmm. So it's like factor 10 or 20 between, I think, electric chainsaw and, uh, and an e-foil um, yeah. to get in the air. That is super cool. I I'm gonna cut this little piece out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it to the battery engineers that I still know from well, from know steel, so. and, I'm yeah. gonna, and I'm gonna challenge them. You know, if they can come up with a solution, maybe maybe <laughs> they're gonna take on the challenge. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. Okay, uh, and that would actually solve my my uh, battery problem right now. <laughs> I would try it if they send me the batteries. I would I would try it. Yeah. Okay, let's 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 get you guys connected if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So maybe let's let's sum it up because we're already well uh, one hour fifteen in the in the podcast. But <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I, I would have a lot of more questions. Um, but if someone wants to get into e-foiling, especially DIY e-foiling, like final advice, like what what should you do? What what should you not do? Where should you look? Um, what would you give people um, as a takeaway? Yeah, um, so um, the the bill of material we already posted in this forum is still up to date. So this is still the components um, you should buy 
um, mm -hmm. which aren't that pricey and which have uh, good quality. So, and if you if you want to start, I think there is um, so there is no better motor for that price. There's no better controller for that price, and also the other components, remote and so on. That's um, yeah, it's uh, that's still and the perfect setup, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, yeah. before that you should um, like go to this um, forum eforbuilders.com mm -hmm. and just just read for a few days. Just connect mm -hmm. with people, read their um, experiences. I think that's the the first step. If you are um, German, mm -hmm. we have a German Telegram group with about ninety mm -hmm. people, um, which is I think one of the the most important pieces. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. so right now we are talking what, over an hour. We are just two guys. We're doing some stuff, mm -hmm. but there are. Um, um, over 50 people in, in Germany um, mm -hmm. building efforts. One one is uh, more different than the other. Um, so mm -hmm. there is so much help in this community. Yeah. So everyone has its own uh, special skills. So mm -hmm. one can draw in 3D. One can uh, build batteries. There's uh, there are some guys who are gods with carbon fiber stuff. And they all mm -hmm. uh, are helping each other with tips, with material. Um, nice. Yeah, it's it's uh, the community is, uh, I think, one of the greatest parts of this. Yeah, sure, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there is also like meetups. So like every year, we meet up at the lake, um, and then like twenty or thirty DIY efoils are hitting um, above the water on the lake. That's mm -hmm. also uh, pretty nice, actually. And it's so nerd. It's so like a, you can imagine. So nerd talk, you know. Yeah. It's so yeah. so cool, <laughs> so, so great. And there's yeah. uh, that, that's something where um, that every wing follower is already familiar with, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's also it's the most nerdiest wind <laughs> surf sport that you can get into because there are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and when when is the next meetup? When and where? Is it a invitational or can you just um, public it, uh, pu publish it here? Ah oh, no, um, um, so it's uh, it's always self organized, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if if there is. Um, I think there in, isn't anything planned. Or maybe in Austria or something. In Austria, they want to to do something. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. in in the Netherlands, I've I've uh, read. Yeah? yeah, yeah, in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, but now for Germany, um, so we already had yeah. one meetup yeah. in Leipzig, so in our mm -hmm. hometown. Um, Where's yeah. the, the, the highest uh, density of efforts in yeah. Germany, I think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. But you can just just uh, just join our uh, group or write us on um, where? Telegram. Telegram oh. or here in um If I build us, oh yeah, on the on the forum. Yeah, there are, okay. there are some. Sometimes cool. there are threads about meetups and something like that. Yeah, nice. So if if someone wants to uh, follow you guys around or connect with you guys, um, the way is Telegram, and uh, just to type in your real names or how do I find you guys? Um, yeah, you can just ask uh, in the in the um, uh, rifle case if I thread. Okay. You can, cool. You can just see who started the thread and then just write yeah. him a um, private message. Or on YouTube, just write a comment on YouTube and we also get this okay. one. Yeah. yeah. Or on Instagram, you can uh, maybe you can link the. So you see, there is heaps, yeah. heaps of. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so what's your what's your final final thing? Like, what's your guys' Instagram? It's and I also put it in the show notes. I'm I'm pretty new to this. Uh, it's uh, called Dragonfruit Bärlauch. Dragonfruit Bärlauch, which is easy to spell, and I'm just to make sure that everybody gets it, I put it in the show notes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And what's yours, Fra uh, Frank? So on, on YouTube, it's uh, Super Lefax. So this is Super how the Lefax. channel is called. Yeah. So and I think that's also your name on e Builders, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right. Yeah. Guys, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna get back to you if I hear something from Steel. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. Definitely. Okay. definitely. Show them the video, and they will give you tons of batteries. 
Yeah, I mean, I, if if uh, seriously, I think you kind of touched their egos when you said a chainsaw <laughs> um, is something that you can buy in every supermarket. Because I, if I remember correctly, um, a battery powered chainsaw was really a big challenge. <laughs> um, because everything else, like all the other products, like a b leaf blower, yes. a, a yes. mower, yes. all this stuff was super easy to do. Yeah. And the chainsaw, yeah. I, if I if I recall it correctly, yeah. was like everybody was like, "There's no way we can get enough power out of that chainsaw." Because, and that's I think part of the challenge. Yeah, if you have a handheld product, the battery has to be light. Yes, yeah. true. Yeah, true. So, if they can build a heavier battery because it's floating. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're going to take up the challenge. <laughs> so you can tell them, them uh, we need, uh, I think, about 30 of the big battery packs and one chainsaw. Oh, two chainsaws. <laughs> two, chainsaws. Two, two chainsaws. We yeah. need two chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I let them know. Um, thank you guys for joining the podcast. It was fun um, to, to talk, to get into e-falling. And I'm really keen to 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 build one because yeah, I think uh, 4,000 euros is, is feasible and uh, Yeah, and you know the, the annoying part about wing falling is if you see on your forecast app there's a great wind coming and then the date comes closer and the forecast is going down and down and down and then on the day you are on the beach you know like where's my wind and it's like there's no wind at all yeah, just and some fucking e will... on the water <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then i just yeah. grab my efoil you know and yeah. and grab a can of beer and yeah. just go around the lake and drink my beer yeah 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 <laughs> Cool. It was Guys. a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much yeah, uh, thank you. for having us on your show. Uh, yeah, cool. So uh, and, and fingers crossed with your with your EFOR build. So if you need any advice, just don't hesitate to. For sure, yeah. for sure. I'm gonna come back to you Give guys. Some and maybe let's see how it goes. If it goes well, maybe we can have a second uh, version of that um, where we discuss uh, the build. Yeah. Um, and if it goes completely sideways, maybe we can have a session <laughs> where we just where we have like a let's say a, a improvement session. <laughs> okay, okay, of course. All right, that's good, guys. Thank you very much to be on the show. Please stay in the uh, stay online when I when we end the recording and talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Have See a good you. one, Daniel. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>